स्वर्गदीं प्रार्थयन्ति ते पुण्यमासाद्य सुरेन्द्रलोक आश्रन्ति दिव्यान् दिव्योग दिव्योग दोज हु परफॉर्म इलेवेटेड एक्शन्स विच इज द मीनिंग ऑफ गुड एक्शन्स raise themselves up to the heavenly region and there for a long time enjoy the delight of the gods but there is a corollary following from this ते तम भुक्त स्वर्गलोक विशाल क्षीणे पुण्य मर्त्यलोक वेशंति धर्म मनुप्रपन्न गता गतम काम काम द कमिंग एंड द गोइंग इन ए साइकल ऑफ बर्थ्स एंड डेथ्स बिकम्स द फेट ऑफ दोज पीपल इवन दोज पीपल हु हैव spend their life in those good deeds which are sanctioned in the ritualistic portions of the vedas whereby they appease the gods in heaven reaching heaven has been the longing of humanity throughout history all religions speak of heaven 
Sometimes heaven is considered even as the abode of the creator himself. As when we say God is in heaven. Here in these cited verses of the Bhagavad Gita, heaven is described in a different fashion altogether. Not as the location of the Almighty, but as a region of enjoyment. Since enjoyment has been analyzed and threadbare in our earlier sessions, and from our point of view, or from anyone's point of view, enjoyment is unimaginable except through the coming <coughs> of the sense organs in contact with the objects external to them. A person can, cannot rejoice in one's own self. That is the whole matter. You require something else outside you, some object to titillate the sense organs. Whereby, it looks that a principle of satisfaction is generated within oneself. Now, speaking about gods in heaven and the possibility of reaching these heavenly regions by good deeds is something worth considering. Does one really go to heaven? And are there gods in such a realm? Is there a blissful region above this physical level? Is it inhabited by divinities like Indra, Varuna and others? How does it come about that a deed that is regarded as good propels a person's soul to the heavenly regions? What is the connection between a good deed and the remote region called heaven populated by the divinities? The constitution of the heavenly regions must have some similarity with the constitution of the deeds performed in this world in a manner which is considered virtuous or praiseworthy. Now what is a virtuous action? <coughs> what is a good action? Easily this question is not answered because we generally go by the principles of social conduct laid down by us, by the community of people in whose midst we are living. The possibility of reaching a region above this physical level through a good deed implies that the so-called good deed also does not belong to this earth. Earthly action cannot take a person to a non-earthly condition. As is the cause, so is the effect. The perishable cannot take one to the imperishable, taking for granted that the heaven of the gods is imperishable from one angle of vision at least. Now, what kind of action should we perform in this world in order that we may be made eligible to ascend to the heaven of the gods? We do many good deeds. 
we do charity we plant trees we dig wells on the road we construct temples we feed the poor are these actions that take us to the heaven of the gods for this purpose we have to analyze the meaning of action itself what do you mean by action a movement of the limbs of the body in some direction digging planting giving etc do these physical gestures of the limbs of the body constitute action evidently it does not look that they can take us anywhere a performance which is purely motivated by physical movement does not seem to be adequate to propel us above the physical level physical movements will be limited to the physical realm only a super physical realm cannot be reached unless there is some super physical element in our action also there should be some kind of harmony or similarity of construction between the means adopted and the end that is aimed at what kind of heavenly character do we find in the actions that we perform in this world known as good can anyone come to a decision that some actions that we perform have a heavenly content in them we will shudder to hear even a question raised of this kind because to us heaven seems to be so far away remotely situated above us that it is difficult to believe that the little acts that we perform even with a good intention have anything to do at all with that blessed region of the gods what is the mystery behind this why does the scripture say that good deeds will take you to heaven and make you rejoice like indra the chief of the gods and so on the goodness of an action therefore does not seem to be definable in terms of social sanction it has to be sanctioned by the gods themselves it should be a good deed in the eye of gods not in the eye of people only if all humanity says this is a wonderful thing that you have done it need not necessarily be wonderful it should be wonderful from the point of view of the structural <coughs> pattern of the region higher than in the physical level all glory that we earn on this earth planet conditioned by human thinking whatever be the imaginary greatness of this achievement cannot be said to have any kind of heavenly content in it which would mean that nothing can take us to heaven if a heavenly deed only can take us to the heavenly region actually we must understand also the meaning of heaven in this context what is heaven is it so many kilometers away above the earth plane if you travel high in a rocket far far beyond in the distant sky will we be reaching heaven even if you touch the border of the expanded space heaven will not be seen there the reason is heaven is a state of consciousness it is not placed physically 
above the physical earth an elevated sensation arising from our own self lifting us above our physical personality a longing that arises from the depths of our soul lifting us above our physical needs a condition not easy to understand and appreciate a longing that cannot be equated with anything that is available in this world may be regarded as a heavenly longing from that point of view any physical or human achievement in this world cannot be regarded as so good as to be capable of rocketing up to the heavenly region a non physical operation should take place from within our own selves are we physical personalities or is there anything non physical in us when we are enthused or in a state of intense rapture in what we may call an artistic fashion beautiful music and delighting painting or even an architecture and a sculpture can take us above the consciousness of our physical personality there is an element in us which is not limited to this body which is it is that longs for achievements beyond the ken of this earth or human thought even to reach the heaven of the gods it is not easy though bhagwan shri krishna in these verses of the bhagavad gita does not regard this achievement as anything worth the while it is regarded by him as a poor achievement ending finally in a coming down from the heaven of indra to the mortal realm of action once again gata gatam kama kama lavanti people who desire objects of sense enjoy the cycle of coming and going even if it be going to heaven and coming back to the earth so notwithstanding the fact <coughs> that the bhagavad gita here <coughs> does not regard an achievement in the heaven is anything of any permanent value still it is necessary for us to know where is this heaven <coughs> we always look up above opening our eyes to the skies when we pray to a god in the heaven because the concept of the above from our physical point of view is geometrical distance oriented and spatially conditioned but the heaven of the gods is supposed to be not measurable in this manner it is not in space at all if you travel the endless space for ages you will not reach the heaven of the gods because the, all these experiences even in the distant space and time process these experiences belong to the earth level only we have to be gods in our own selves to some extent in order that we may reach the gods even to reach this heaven of the gods which shri krishna considers as not of any much value even to reach that poor blessedness of the heaven 
we have to be gods in our own selves because only from a god a godly deed can emanate a thorny bush will not produce apples likewise a distracted mind tethered to the physical body bothered much about family relations and connections with this earth what kind of action can proceed from that individual purely earthly have you seen a godly person anywhere whose deeds may be regarded as divine and motivated by nothing of this earth if such a person is available that person may be regarded as fit for going to heaven it is so difficult to reach the heaven of the gods that is why the sacrificers of the vedas take intense pain in performing these yajnas with meticulous care because even a little mistake that they commit in the chanting of the mantra or the arrangement of the sacrificial altar will not be enough to push them up to the region above the world questions as to the utility ultimate of a sacrificial action in converting the mortal into the immortal are raised in the bhagavadgita upanishad where one of the opponents of yajnavalkya put this question yajnavalkya is as all actions are perishable how will they take you to the imperishable to that yajnavalkya gives an answer all actions are perishable indeed but there is one type of action which is not perishable what is that yajnavalkya generally when we perform an action we consider certain constituent factors like the performer of the action the person concerned the yajamana so called the method adopted the means employed in the performance of the yajna or the sacrifice and the intention there is behind in the performance of the sacrifice itself all these are done with an idea that this type of action will satisfy the divinity whose name is taken in the chanting of the mantra of the veda that divinity being far away above the earth plane cannot make this action immortal though the divinity itself is immortal what is the answer yajnavalkya the answer is here all action should be considered as a spiritual meditation it is not a performance of an externalized movement by a person but a total concept that arises in the performer of the action wherein the divinity also is included in which case it would look that the action is performed by the divinity itself the yajamana the performer gets transformed into the divine power present in the divinity worshiped or adored through the action and the means the instrument and the intention all get divinized because of the meditation that is carried on together with the performance of this age yajna brings the divinity also into the purview of this action so that one 
in this process of meditation cannot know who is actually performing the yajna and who is meditating the divinity itself enters the heart and the soul of the performer or the yajmana and takes upon itself the responsibility of seeing that the yajna is perfectly conducted it was difficult to understand what this answer is given by yajna valkya to shakalya the sage who put this question in the bhagavadaranya upanishad however here is a secret which has to be studied carefully heaven therefore is a region which is about the physical consciousness of humanity therefore actions that are not limited to the physical consciousness of bodily individuality can alone take a person to the heavenly region a intensely holy person only can aspire to go to the heaven there was a sage called vajasravas as we have it in the kathopanishad he wanted to go to the heavens he performed a yajna called sarva vedas in which he had to give in charity everything that he had he gave all the wealth all the land and property everything that he had to people so that it appeared that he nothing was left with him he had to give everything but he did not give everything really speaking he did not offer himself also because in this sarvatva or all inclusiveness of the charitable deed the performer also goes with it so the egoism of the performer of the sarva veda sacrifice maintained itself and the story is very interesting as you know in the kathopanishad yat shri bhagavan krishna says all this achievement is nowhere before another great achievement that is ahead of you gatagatam kama kama labhanti it is true after that the great admiration of the almighty lord bhagavan shri krishna follows ananya chintayanto maam ye jana paryupasate tesham nitya vayutanam yogakshemam vaham here also is a passage which prescribes the method of what you call total action and total meditation we have heard this thing said many a time but the mind is so treacherously selfish and uh, can connive ways and means of not allowing a person to succeed that we don't know what is actually the mean, meaning of this when the great lord says everything shall be provided to that one whose mind and consciousness are united with in me or with me what does he actually mean now where is this god whose meditation or union can provide us with everything that we need far away is the god that is what we generally think brahma is in satyaloka vishnu is in vaikuntha shiva rudra is in kailasa how far are they how much time will they take to come to rescue us and provide us with our requirements our relationship to god also should be clear to us before we try to understand the meaning of this great promise given by the almighty himself everything shall be provided to you not only your requirements will be given to you these requirements granted to you will also be taken care of so that you need not have the fear of losing them afterwards a gift is offered and it is also protected for your sake this is a wonderful miraculous statement which will shake us from our roots if we can really understand what it implies 
this is not like going to the heaven of the gods for some time by the performance of a godly deed this is not a godly deed something more than it is what is it it is unity with the very purpose of creation the meaning of existence the principle of eternity itself a shopkeeper may take time to supply your goods sending it through a vehicle a cart but god does not take that time instantaneous is also a poor word to describe the way in which god acts because instantaneousness also has a tinge of the time process in it timeless action is god's action it is done before you say it is done you cannot even say it is just now or here itself it is more than that even the words here and now are poor to describe the manner in which god acts because we think in terms of space and time whereas this action comes from eternity which is not in space and not in time to deserve this blessing which is so great and grand to even to conceive we have also to manifest from within ourselves the eternity that is within us and that we ourselves are mortal deeds we said do not take us to heaven similarly time condition devotion specially limited actions we will not summon this protection that is promised to us in this bhagavad gita yoga chevam vahami the practice of yoga is essentially this much it is a unity of the deepest in us with the deepest in the cosmos what is the deepest in us we are likely to think that this visible photograph personality is what we are we know psychologically for the way of saying at least that we have a mind which is deeper than the body there is an intellect and something very deep but the i the we thisness which is asserted through this personality basically even at the time of death even in deep sleep that one is the deathless principle in us that deathless eternal principle in us is what defies the consciousness of death and tells us that we cannot die that is the reason why we always feel that death is far away from us though we have seen people dying almost every day the remaining people never think that it is their fate because the eternity that is within them tells us tells them everybody that this is not your fate because you are eternal the eternity is not known but it is inside flashing forth in this conviction that all may die but i will not this feeling arises due to the eternal principle operating within us in this meditation which is the requisition for the fulfillment of the promise of bhagwan shri krishna yoga chemam mahamyam we have to think perhaps as he would like us to think if a friend can provide you with what you need you have to think like a friend and not like somebody else if you turn your face away from the friend the friend will not provide you with your requirements unity of purpose identity of feeling oneness of existence are implied in friendship 
that friendship is to be found also between a devotee and the supreme almighty suhurdam sarvabhutanam jnatva mam shanti murachati peace will be your blessing and your attainment when the time comes for you to realize that i am your true friend i am the friend of all being suhurdam sarvabhutanam jnatva mam shanti murachati so there is a heaven above the heavens that we are given in a description gata gatam kama kama labhante ye ananya chintayanto ma was is a declaration of the eternal principle in the universe and in our own selves while the temporal reality speaks in the earlier verses the eternal being speaks in the subsequent verse अनन्याश्चिंदो मेदना परिपासिफिकल्टी इज दिस टू थिंक इन द मैंड मोर डिफिकल्टी इज दिस मेडिटेट लाइक दिस द मैंड इज अकस्टम टू थिंक ओनली इन टर्म्स ऑफ वॉट इट सीज और परसीव आउट साइड द इटर्नल प्रिंसिपल द गॉड एलिमेंट ऑलवेज एक्ट keeps its notice it cries and weeps and expects something from somewhere not believing that whatever one needs will emerge instantaneously from one's own self provided the eternal comprehensiveness which is the factor that provides our needs <coughs> is also present in our own selves this is the meaning of thou art that we have read this many times in vedanta scriptures but the art in the middle coming between thou and that spoils the whole thing there is no art you are you do not use that word are that connecting link the verb spoils the actual relationship between thou and that because there is no relationship at all between thou and that the thou is the that and vice versa is the case in this ananya chintana mentioned in this verse non separate contemplation all blessing is poured upon the person this is the highest devotion bhakti you can think of highest yoga and jnana by attaining which we do not live like mortals anymore but veritable moving gods on this earth we shall be ever blessing hari om tat sat